is finally here, Snyder Cut Kateers. Man, I'm Kevin Smith, and after all the years of speculation and feverish anticipation, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to the digital red carpet premiere of Zack Snyder's Justice League, man. All the hype and pizzazz of a major Hollywood premiere with none of the associated limo fees, unless you decided to stream this from inside of a limo, in which case, well played. As you can see, we're broadcasting right here from a spare bedroom in my house. I'm just kidding, I wish I lived here. We're actually at the all new DC exhibit at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour Hollywood, man, which means you're getting an exclusive first glimpse tonight at this amazing new space. Now, as we all know, the Snyder Cut has been a long time coming and it absolutely would not have happened without the support of tonight's extra special VIPs, man. I'm talking about you, the fans, especially all the APs out there. Without your energy and commitment to the cause, the hashtags, the petition, the plane flying messages over Warner Brothers, the world may never have seen Zach's incredible vision finally brought to life, as we're gonna see tonight. Thanks to you, later tonight, we'll all be treated to a truly massive cinematic experience. More story, more character, more action. Oh yeah, and the debut of a new world-conquering supervillain named Darkseid, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps you might have heard of him. But before this super-powered hype train finally pulls into the station, we're taking all the best parts of a red carpet premiere and beaming them right into your home. Over the next hour, we'll interact with our fellow fans. We're gonna rub elbows with movie stars. We're gonna admire some of the evening's finest cosplay fashions and even visit with the director himself, Mr. Zack Snyder. Aquaman, those kids are adorable. Good stuff, fan pen. I'm gonna start calling you the Legion of Zoom. You like that? Now let's keep that energy going, kids, because I'm ready to give you your first look behind the scenes on the set of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Are you ready for this? Behold! I beam them. You're gonna have your run-in with uh, Cyborg, where you boom, pound him. Action! You throw him. Just look here. You're in trouble now. You need to go back to them. Go. Go. Those are their back shots. It's then stop Wonder Woman from boosting you. Yep. Gentlemen, I have been to a lot of movie premieres, but this is a first. I'm here in a bat cave, sitting across from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Zack Snyder. Excellent to see you, sir. Good to see you, my brother. Now, I told you before we got started, I watched uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League from Friday at one in the morning. I got a link and I said, uh, it's one in the morning. I said, I wanted to see it for so long. Let's go <laughs> for it. So I figured maybe I'd watch an hour go to sleep and stuff. I watched it till five in the morning. I thought it was a stunning achievement. 
I think in terms of uh, a superhero movie or a comic book movie, probably the most visionary. Um, instantly, you could tell the artist behind it. Um, you're a guy that paints in splash pages. If you're a comic book collector, um, there's the idea of a splash page as you open up a double page spread and it's just this gorgeous imagery uh, that the artist has put together. That's what this movie is. It is a series of splash pages. Mm. And, and even when you break it down into the chapters, it felt like an entirely uh, coherent comic book experience. Because as you read an arc that involves a couple different stories, a couple different issues, sometimes they dedicate an issue to one character, one character, one character, one character, and then bring them all together. Yeah. So it played out exactly like that. Now, going back to the start, and I mean Man of Steel. Sure. Was that the vision that one day you would get to a four hour giganto cut of the Justice League? <laughs> well, you know, when, when we did Man of Steel, you know, in a world with Batman, in a world with just Batman, it's hard to have Superman as well. Right. Like that day, if you decide like, we should add Superman to this world, it'd be kind of tough. Cause you'd be like, well, I kind of haven't had him before and this is a deal. But in a world with Superman, Batman might be out there somewhere in an alley beating up some dude. Um, so, a bad guy, of course. Uh, so, um, you know, when we were doing Man of Steel, we did like, you know, there's a little bit of LexCorp, there's a little bit of, you know, Wayne. So, you know, just trying to say like, look, we, we think that shit's out there. There's a satellite. Like, I remember the Wayne Tech yeah. satellite and everyone in the audience was like, ah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, okay. You know, we always had that eye to go to, you know, we, Justice League, was that gonna be out there? Right. Um, and so, the idea of it being four hours and being sort of what, what we have now, I mean, that sort of evolved from after BVS and we had sort of like really seeded the world and now it was time to meet everybody. That's how it just naturally happened. If you really take the time with all of them, you end up with four hours. Oh, you know? right. That's kind of, it wasn't a, we didn't go like, we're really gonna blow it out with four hours. I knew it was gonna be a long movie to introduce them correctly. You know, you end up, and then also to give the villain, frankly, you know, Steppenwolf and Darkseid needed their, they need their space to feel like you've got a complete emotional journey that you've been on with these guys. Even for Steppenwolf, I wanted him to go on a journey too, right. you know? As anybody who goes into an endeavor this large, how many days did you guys shoot, do you know? Months? Months and months. Um, we were in England for a year. Who you know? is the most important person in the process to you? I'm assuming Deb, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, definitely Debbie is the, the number one. She's the top of the whole thing, you know, for me. She busts my chops in the best possible way, but also, She's also my partner and really supports me when, you know, the chips are down. So it's a really, it's a, I couldn't, I got lucky. And then the rest of my crew, I bring them from movie to movie. So they all are, you know, they're family to us. They're really who we are social with as well mm -hmm. as that our little circus family is pretty much how, you know, they're, they're, our, they're our friends. So it, it, it really, makes going for a year to England not a crazy experience because it's the same people we would see if we weren't in England. Right, right, they right. just happen to all now live in England. So, it's, so it works out pretty good. Um, since you're in a world of uh, uh, epic storytelling where sequels are de rigueur, you get to work with the same casts over and over again. And as we True. saw in the footage, there's a lot of affection. As we saw during the release the Snyder Cut campaign, there's a lot of affection from your cast. Sure. It seemed like family, no? Yeah, 100%. Like those guys, yeah, I really consider them friends, especially that cast, because I've, you know, I've been making these DC movies for almost 10 years. And so you, you literally, I don't know any other actors. <laughs> right, <laughs> at, this right. point, at this point, I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, those are like the main, the main actors I know. But I think the thing that's cool is um, that, those fans and that sort of movement, you know, really did gain momentum though when the, on, it was two years ago on the end, on November 17th, when the fans really went crazy on Twitter mm. and Gal and Jason um, ben too. and ben, ben all, you know, joined in and, and Ray, of course, and they all really kind of, they really catapulted it into the stratosphere and, and 
you know, my agent got a call from the studio the next day to say like. And let's talk about that because the the movement that created the Zack Snyder's Justice League, the movement that got it to the world. Sure. Um, we talk about in this world, uh, you know, hey, it's for the fans, it's all for the fans, it's for you. There's a lot of fan service because that's good for business. This was fan service of a different kind. This is instead of a studio talking about fan service to an audience, an audience literally delivering fan service for the filmmaker. Yeah. So you were at the epicenter of a campaign, honestly, that has never happened before. But what was it, what did it feel like? Were you ever scared or was it like, this is actually the road to finishing the movie? Yeah, I had a lot of faith in the fans and I really appreciated everything they did. I really did, it was amazing. They, they, they've been a partner with me in, you know, we as a family uh, support um, suicide prevention and mental health awareness and it's a really big part of the why of this movie. And they've been with me, you know, in the trenches with that insane and so you raised a lot of money too. All, Their fandom know, has been a, a very positive. Yeah, very over half a million a dollars that they've just given to that cause. You know, unbelievable. They're not professionals. They don't. They don't have any dog in the hunt other than they just want to see the movie. Right. It's all we want to do. And they're like tireless, insanely, you know, dedicated. But I'm glad that like I can give the smallest amount back. And really, the smallest amount back is this effort of making this movie. And it really is true. Because like without them, for sure there would be no. This would we wouldn't be here talking. There would be no movie. Um, but yeah, it it was a Herculean effort. Uh, then they did the Times Square. The Times Square was really uh, to me was like a bit of a tipping point because you could really look at that and and it was it was two billboards and there were video and the Superman flew into the other billboard and then and the money that they raised to get the billboards they would give half that money to AFSB, and you know there was always a that partnership was on the on the billboards and everything. So you were like, wow, that journey was just insane. And I, and I'll and I'll and yeah, did I think was there a chance it was gonna really happen? Like you know, I don't want to encourage, right? You know, something that's impossible. They were doing such amazing work. You know, so I would say like, look, here's some cool stuff. Here's a drawing I did. And maybe because of streaming, you know. Thank, uh, it certainly helped that God HBO Max for there was a HBO place Max. To, yeah. to bring it. No, absolutely. Thank God for HBO Max because without HBO Max, I don't even also know that there would be a venue for this movie to exist. You know, right. you know that that we, we're in this beautiful serendipitous moment where you know these two things happened at the same time, and it's and it's uh, it's really it's fortunate. And I think that you know in the streaming world, this is kind of the perfect place for this four-hour movie to exist because, you know, it's also a chaptered film, you know, like I, I always envisioned it as this sort of chaptered piece. And when we were watching the movie at home, it's really easy when a chapter comes up to pause the movie and go get, go to the bathroom or go get some chips or whatever you're gonna do. And that's cool. And then you just come back and you get right into it. It's just, it's like a, you're binging a show over four hours, which, you know, these in the modern world, the, do stand on our heads. Everybody's used to that. Yeah, that that's point. no big It's true, the time's actually caught up with the ability to tell, to give this story a venue to be told. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, another thing that worked incredibly nicely and, and probably the most important character that everyone was anticipating uh, is the first cinematic appearance of, of Darkseid. Mm. Uh, I'm delighted, you know, I don't want to spoil the movie, but like when, there's a moment when Omega Beams come into play oh, yeah. and I shrieked, oh, like yeah. in the middle of the wee hours of the morning, he's like, ah, because you never see something like that in the real world. Yeah. How important was it for you to get Darkseid into this? Here he's a major component, and in fact, correct me if I'm wrong, one sequence, he took the place of Steppenwolf. Like, I remember there was yeah, one yeah. Steppenwolf beaten ass, well, at the but end, instead it was Darkseid. Oh yeah, well, I mean, and that was always the way I had, it's fantastic. Uh, I had always imagined. And, you know, bringing Uxus, baby, because uh, when he was younger. Deep cuts, kids, deep cuts. <laughs> uh, and so when he comes to Earth, you know, thousands of years ago, looking for this, this thing that he had heard was hidden somewhere in the universe, he, so he's, he'd been searching all these planets, destroying them probably in his quest. Turns them to dust, he says. Turns them to dust. So he finds on Earth this equation. We, called the anti-life equation, which controls the will, all will. 
Um, so basically you could bend anyone to his way of thinking is a, is a way to kind of think about it. So what happens is we see him, and so we get to see him like, you know, fighting and kind of, you know, doing his thing, kind of a young, you know, world destroyer, you know, cutting his teeth on, you know, some <laughs> some earthlings. And, you know, he gets, he gets, he, he, he bites off a little more than he can chew. But it's fun, and, and it, of course, when we see him, we do see him later in the movie, now it's, he's really the absolute king daddy of the universe, and he's mad about that thing that happened to him a while ago, and he's not gonna be kind when he finds out. That's where he wants to go, because that's where the thing, first of all, that he lost is, and also those guys humiliated me a little bit a while ago, and right. I wanna make up for that. Uh, Dark Side Comics royalty, because he's created by uh, Jack Kirby, for heaven's sakes, and you did him justice, uh, true justice, Zack Snyder Justice League, justice, by putting him in this flick. As a big, longtime fan, I thank you for that. Let's talk about heroes, because you've, as you mentioned before, 10 years of doing DC hero movies. Almost, um, yeah. You've got, so you have a perspective. You have a take on heroes that's, that are very distinctive. What makes a hero most for you? Well, I think, you know, the thing about Justice League, I think that is sort of the thesis of the movie, is that, you know, these heroes are misfits, you know, and, and they, they all come from, they're slightly dysfunctional and they, but in a lot of ways, incredibly relatable to just us, just people, you know, in their, the best myth speaks to us in an archetypal way about the struggles that we all face in our everyday lives. And I think that um, what we learn is that these real, these heroes are us in a lot of ways. And I think that the real heart of the movie, if you look at Cyborg's journey, who's like really the, he's the linchpin, he's the kind of the why he's of it. He's the heart and soul of the journey. He's on it, and even though he has godlike powers as well, because he's Borg life, um, he's our human way in. Yeah, 100%. The one that, like, like Barry, to some degree, we can totally identify. Yeah, like we, we yesterday... And Ray we, did a phenomenal job. I, I know, Ray does. That's he's, the other beauty of, of the Zack Snyder Justice League. You get to see that entire storyline. Yeah, so when you look at sort of Ray's journey, that, and that in the end, there's a line where, he's, where he says, you know, I'm not broken and I'm not alone, you know, which I think is, it really, in a lot of ways, just has a beautiful meshing with our message of mental health and our message of like suicide prevention and all this, there's just this beautiful symmetry now to the whole thing and that, and that a hero is just, you know, we all are heroes to ourselves, you know, you, we have to, because we can all stand up and we can all be strong and we can all be supported by each other. And I think that in the end, that's really what the movie is about. As a longtime DC Comics fan, uh, uh, this is incredibly gratifying to me to see the vision writ large from end to end. And it had everything to do with people that you minted yourself. The people that like pushed for it, released the Snyder Cut, were people you made fans by telling your versions of the stories of these great characters, man. So like, That's cool. on a, as a DC fan, I salute you. As a filmmaker, I salute you. It's a wonderful, wonderful film. Well, I Congratulations. Appreciate it. I appreciate it, really do. Awesome. When you grab his head, you're not as, like, you almost want to, like, give it a toy. But rather than you trying to stop it, yeah. I'm mad! That one right there, this one right here, doesn't stand boom. And then, so this will be the line. Where's that? He's gonna say his line. Not it up with it, say line. Believe it. Kids, on a night like tonight, the stars always shine bright, man. So let's welcome a few of the brightest stars. Hi everyone, this is Connie Nielsen and I play Queen Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons in Justice League and Wonder Woman. And this is a shout out to all of the fans 
Thank you for all the love, for the support, for the dedication. And thank you for all the messages, the fan art, all of the ways in which you appreciate the work that we've brought into playing these characters. You're going to have a blast with this film, as you can see. There are lots and lots of Amazons in this one, too. And I just hope you guys are going to have uh, an incredible time. I hope you enjoy everything that um, we've worked really hard to put up there. And I know Zach is just so excited that you guys are getting to see this. So lots and lots and lots of love and thank you and gratitude for uh, all your support. Hey, it's Ray Porter. Big shout out to the fans who never gave up. Thank you, HBO Max. And most of all, congratulations, Zack Snyder. It's been a heck of a journey. Thanks for bringing me along. What just happened was you looked at Mira, and then you looked back at him, and then you Got it. Rah! Rich could have his hand up, right? So you could you could put it right here. Boosh! That mark will be super critical where you guys land the grab. Oh no. Starting with one camera, kind of looking down the line. Yeah. And the second camera, the defense, when he sees the blitz. Second you turn, start to analyze the defense. Are we did still do the scoreboard? Yeah, the scoreboard. When he looks at the clock, when he looks at the clock, hold, hold, hold. Now, everybody who's anybody knows that the Snyder Cut features dark side, man. But based on this next piece, it's clear the film also has a lighter side, too. You see what I did there? Wordplay, man. Behold, I give you the blooper reel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ezra Miller, and I am criminally excited to be a part of the Justice League. <laughs> Too much fun, there should be rules. Yes, 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 yes,
kindergarten here. Honestly, it's preschool. It's worse than preschool. Think about it, right? Will it? Oh, oh, don't grab me! Woohoo! You have more life to bring your baby. I used to snuggle like under my, under my cow. Today just feels like it's going smoothly and efficiently. It feels odd saying that to you with my shirt on, covered in baby oil. A uh, lot of them came back to- Oh my god, look at this cat! The king of tech, that only took like 10 don't trust this guy. I can't even get connected on his internet. The Snyders, how are you? Right now. There it is. <laughs> we, we're losing him again. Look at him. He can, uh, well, he can see us, baby. They can both see us. Kids, if you can't hear us, man, huge congratulations. This is going to be a big night for you. Have, how do you feel? Use your face and your hands to indicate what this moment means to you. Oh, and now I lost them. Oh. He's lost? And, yeah, he's gone. Lost oh, no, he's there. He's if on I your think, computer. If I could speak for the Snyders, for the Snyders. this is what... <laughs> yeah, they're back! I don't have to speak for... And they're gone. I now feel the frustration of all those folks who wanted the Snyder cut for so long. Wait, are we back? You're about to get what you wanted. Whoa, they're back! Can you hear me, kids? Yes! yes. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hopefully, maybe they can hear you. I hear you a little bit. I got you. you. A little bit. It might be yeah. the going How on. How are you computer. feeling? I feel, I hear you now. How are you feeling, kids? A big night for both of you. What's it feel like right now? It's exciting. I'm frustrated by technology, as usual. Um, but uh, very excited. We're, uh, you know, it's T minus. It's happening right now. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting man let's send everybody over to hbo max to watch um it, it, the snyder cut J zach snyder's justice league is happening right now if you're on the east coast it's happening if you're on the west coast you got some time and stuff kids um I, I couldn't be happier for, for both of you this i mean i, I know it's frustrating getting hooked up but what a triumphant night for you you worked so damn hard and the fans delivered you to this moment is there anything you want to say to the good folks who have pushed for release the snyder cut well, i think we just want to say we wouldn't be here without all of you and it really means so much to us personally the support that you've given us in our family has been amazing and uh we really hope that you love this movie because we've worked really hard and i hope you can see all the respect and love that we have for these characters and it wouldn't be here without you and we realize that and we appreciate it uh what she said 100 percent um thank you debbie for those eloquent words um but yes you know we we love uh and uh, feel huge support from and for and these amazing fans and uh, I just uh, can't wait for you to check out the movie because it's, um, it's coming at you right now. Um, okay, so what they're telling me is to remind everybody that it's 3 a.m. Eastern that it's starting, of uh, 12 a.m. Oh, Pacific. That's when everybody gets... So it's not coming at you quite yet. So no, that's what I, I thought we were. I was trying to throw people off so they can go watch it. I'm sure a bunch of people are like, it's not on, you idiot. Um, yes, <laughs> it starts at, not, at midnight on the East Coast, 3 a.m. Uh, uh, East, uh, not midnight on the, on the West Coast, 3 a.m. on the East Coast. I've read lots of tweets from folks who are staying up around the world. How does that make you both feel as the filmmakers? No, it's amazing. And um, I'm excited. Uh, I'm sorry about the uh, productivity in the workplace tomorrow. Um, you know, um, you know, from a you know the global standpoint of uh, you know world markets and things that are going to crash. 
but um, otherwise really excited about uh, <laughs> the result. What do you think the fans are going to freak out over the most? I mean, I think there's a lot of fun things for the fans to freak out about. I mean, just I think from the beginning to the end, if you are a lover of these characters and movies in general, I just think that, you know, the movie uh, we made with a lot of love uh, for these characters and for this world. And uh, we were just looking for a, it's a big, immersive movie. And, and I think that just every chapter, every every scene um, really is there for this uh, this amazing fandom and the world in general, people who the, uni the uninitiated to just kind of take a deep dive with these characters. Um, and when they see some like uh, Omega Beams maybe coming out somewhere, they might just like lose it. I think the um, Flash and Cyborg um, story, we get to see a lot of them, which is really cool. That's true. I think the answer we were all looking for was simply Dark Side, because you know that's what it is. Well, everyone can't <laughs> wait to see the debut of Dark Side. Uh, did you guys get to see any of the amazing cosplay that they had going on during yeah. the digital red yeah, carpet yeah. premiere? People dressing up. So cool. Those guys are amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I follow a few of those cats um, and see what they made. Liz Wonder, crazy, like, honestly, you know, photo ready costumes that you just i'm like who makes these i need to hire these people unbelievable and for those that don't know like that you're sitting in your home theater this this is where a lot of the early release the snyder cut imagery came from when you would do uh like your what what do you stream on what is your chosen site vero yeah when we did the man of steel watch it? party and we did the announcement. We did it right here. As well as, this is where uh, I did all my visual effects reviews and approved all the shots uh, for the movie. I did it right here in the theater. We would have them. So this is also one of the making up spots uh, for the for the movie itself. So that's pretty cool. Now, how many times do you think at this point both of you have seen the four-hour version of <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League? I've seen it, uh, I can't, I probably don't even know how many times I've seen it. But I will say that when it's all mixed and colored in its final form, I've only probably seen maybe four or five times that way, like completely everything done, done. Like when we do like a QC in the theater or, or on, watch it on one of the big monitors down at Company 3, you know, like HDR monitors, we have to, we, I have to watch every version of the movie, whether it's, you know, um, HDR, the Rec 709 or the Q, the, the, IMAX. the, well, IMAX, we had to, well, I had to watch that. That was not so horrible. Um, and, but it's a great, it, it's cool to just watch it and the black and white version. So I had to watch color, 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 black and white, black and white, black and white, all the different formats. So, but it's, uh, every time I kind of see something else too, I got to say, I'm still seeing stuff. When we watched it in IMAX for the last time, I literally was like, what the heck? What's that? What's that? So, like, you know, when you see it so huge, you, you see it, you're like, how did that get through? And we can talk about that later. <laughs> when when you were working, obviously you're a great team. You guys work together, you've made many movies together, and you also have a life together outside of the movies. How hard is it to be married and make a movie, particularly a movie as gigantic as this, making any movie tests the filmmakers patience on every department um so you know generally speaking you, you you don't you don't have to worry about going to work and then fighting with your spouse as well in case you get into creative differences how well does it work for you guys and can you recommend it for others i, I recommend it i, I mean okay. honestly <laughs> i don't know how it work, would work otherwise i think like we really have each other's best interest. It's it's the same interest, which is really great. And a lot of times you're away on location for a year, so we can just set up house. And you know, we're also there with a lot of the crew or our family. So it's nice when we travel for so long that we have this extended family around us. Um, but I, you know, I think we balance each other out in a nice way. 
Definitely do. Um, and, and, you know, definitely without Debbie, there's no movie. That's just a fact. So, you know, she keeps us, um, you know, focused, we get distracted easily, you know, it's, 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 you know, part and parcel for the, for the game, but like, yeah, but she, uh, keeps us on task as they say. I think he's saying I'm like bad the, cop. Uh, no, he's she's, not bad. <laughs> she's not bad cop. It's not, that's really well, the, hard, the hardest, the, the hardest job that I think that any producer has is they, it's their job to tell the director no. Like at the end of the day, it's their job to make yes, but sometimes you have to be able to tell the director no. And you know, it's, it's hard to hear no when it's coming from somebody that I'm friends with. It, it would be hard to hear no coming from somebody that I live with. I'd be like, come on, man, you got to do it for me. And it transcends I that all, I personal try, into I the try, professional. I try, I try that all the time. I try that. Uh, yeah, but, it, but it's you know, also but I thought, what about, this no that's not gonna get it no but it's, and, but yeah. it's also my play job the love cards yeah, yeah yeah every now and then i'll throw it down sometimes it'll occasionally she'll go like you know what let's do it not very often but like because mostly the request is ridiculous i realize that the what i'm asking is impossible like i'm like can't we build a time machine and just go back and <laughs> Get that thing, and then she'll be like, "No, that, that technology doesn't exist." Okay, you're okay, insane. Okay, but but a lot <laughs> of times I fight for Zach's vision. Always, always fights for the vision. That's so sure. that you know, I th I think that's my job as a producer. Like I, I have an obligation to the studio to be on budget, to be on time, but also ultimately, you know, and I think that's the thing when you have a company that's director driven. It's it's my job to bring his vision to the screen. So I try really hard you know, to make that happen and to figure out a way to make that work. Sometimes I do say no, though. Uh, tonight, <laughs> yeah, you have to. You absolutely have to. Um, tonight, you kids are bringing to life one of Jack Kirby's greatest creations for the first time um, in a movie, uh, Dark Side. Which design did you go with? How did you figure out the inspiration for the design for the first Dark we Side we ever get to see in a movie? I mean... I like I went back to like you know the original Kirby work and I thought that was really kind of a cool place to start. And then you know I sicked my I had an incredible team of you know I have the at at design level I have a crazy awesome team and those guys really dug in with the material and presented me tons of stuff and we kind of narrowed it down and honed it down. But I think always keeping you know that the dark side um you know the new gods is what it's all like you know in, in mind and when you see him i think you see you know him in one second you know that's kind of the that's kind of the litmus test for me is like you that's dark side you know like, like that's how that's got to feel and i think that that i think that i think he's pretty awesome he's pretty badass and we get to see two versions of them and yeah I, we can see that. Yeah. Oh, also though, there is an amazing Weta is doing an amazing, I don't know if you saw that. They're doing like a big sculpture of him on his throne, kind of, you know, King Conan style. Because that was inspired by, you know, like I, that image of him on the throne, you know, I always loved that um, image of Conan at the end of Conan, you know, where it says, you know, he wore that crown upon a troubled brow, that, that bit, you know, and I, and I just, I Film love geek. like movie I geek right movie. there. Movie. <laughs> I remember seeing that and going like, I need it. Well, there's more. What? What? Yeah. And so yeah, it was cool. It was like I, I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that pose. When you like were, I, I think when people started hearing about the flick, the how much was missing from the flick, the extended cut, of the, flick, the four hour version, the the Snyder cut, if you will. There was, you know, nobody had any information. So the internet would provide information, some of it true, some of it did not true at all. Um, I think there was an over, like a, a overarching feeling of like, oh, it's just gonna be a shot of dark side and that's it. But I've seen the flick, there's dark side in the movie. Like legit amount of dark side, yeah, which was like, absolutely, yeah, legit. absolutely thrilling for me. He's got some scenes. He's doing some scene work. Yeah. And like, you know, so we get to know what he's thinking. 
and he's yeah no it's not just like in a dream sequence you know it's he's coming and he's not happy well he is slightly happy what to because he thinks in something see, yes <laughs> he thinks he's gonna he thinks he's gonna get that pesky anti-life equation we shall see what do you cats do so to get much. ready for a night like tonight like how do you guys get ready for the unveiling of uh, something that you've spent so much time working on something that there's so much uh expectation uh about wanting to see how do you prepare for a night like this well we have champagne oh yeah champagne yeah. <laughs> that'll help <laughs> <laughs> squeeze the wheel, squeeze the gears, or whatever you call it. Um, and then we... Uh, it's the best you know, way to do it. We were, we, I was, we were up there working a minute ago. We so uh, it was exciting to rush down. We had a bit of, bit of a snafu with our technology, but that's COVID, uh, you know. And uh, But uh, here we are talking unbelievably through, the, through these cables and wires um, in my... In my you know, basically in my basement. So even though it's a miracle, it, uh, it, it we take it for granted a little bit. And I, I think that that's, uh, you know, it's okay. But we, we uh, what else are we doing? We're gonna take a deep breath maybe. Um, because I feel like we've been going and going. I mean, we just finished the movie like two weeks ago and then getting ready with the ads and, you know, and the press and everything that it takes to put a movie out we haven't been able to catch our breath and, and enjoy the moment. Like this moment, so many people work so hard, including the fans. Like it took them a, a long time to like build this campaign and then to actually make the movie and get it done. I mean, it's it, so many people, the crew, the artists, I mean, they put their heart and souls in it. And I think now to just enjoy the moment, like enough, forget the moment, you know, because I think that's important. But it's the doom of men that they, I don't know. I don't know if you're familiar with that scene in Excalibur, but it's, you know. The witch scene I was in there Excalibur, with say it again. It's the scene where, um, where Merlin like takes out his torch and he's like, listen up, you know, just remember this day, this moment, you were there with Arthur the King. You know, it's that scene, you know, and he says, and then at the end he says, for it's the doom of men that they forget. It's that bit, you know, you have to, sorry, more movie, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you are you are an Excalibur geek, if I remember correctly. It wasn't Excalibur in the opening of BVS? That's one yes, of the movies that's BVS. They were watching the Excalibur. Theater. You know, it was, it was also <clears> Todd <throat> Phillips' joke. Though. They were also weirdly watching Excalibur too. Uh, I don't know. Like I always thought that was like a. I was like, wait, what? Like that's cool. <laughs> well, then, in the in the language of Excalibur, my friend, you both know the charm of making a now nafra. You have that kind of magic. And it's on display in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Everyone's about to binge it. Do you have any closing thoughts for the good folks out there who've been waiting to watch it and are going to be binging it momentarily? Listen, uh, all I would say is that, you know, the movie is made with a lot of love. Every single person in all that, that whole cast, I consider my friends. You know, I've been working with them for years now. Um, it was a family affair. It's, it's, a, it's a boutique-y movie, for, even for its scale. Um, you know, it's a gigantic movie, but it's really bespoke and custom made uh, by like a loving, you know, handful of people that really, really love it, as well as an army of, incredible technicians and amazing artists but the at its core you know is this real family and um i just hope that that comes through the movie because it's really made with love yeah and i i also just want to yeah. say thank you um for the support that everyone has shown us personally and also you know for the attention um to mental health and for um, suicide prevention, because, you know, it's something that's really dear to us. But I think with everything going on in the world right now, you know, I think um, with just a year that we've, you know, been through, I think that is such important work. And the fact that this community has picked up that torch and like carried it 
um, means just so much to us. Uh, so we're, we're really grateful for that. Yeah, that's good. Your kids are good people and you do good work. You do good work on screen. You do good work off screen. Listen to uh, your lady's advice, Zach, and enjoy this moment, man. It's a big year for you. Um, not only do you have Zack Snyder's Justice League, you got the Dead movie coming up elsewhere and whatnot. Big moment for you. It couldn't <laughs> happen to a nicer guy. So hopefully as the world gets to bathe in your glory, you're sitting back there, both of you tonight, and just feeling it and knowing that like, wow, what a journey, man. We're here. You did it, kids. Congratulations. Thank you so much for spending the time with us tonight, Zach and Debbie Snyder. You guys be good. Enjoy the Thank movie, you, man. Thank you for doing it. Dude, thanks for hosting this. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you so God, much. No, no really problem. Great. It was absolutely, abs absolutely my honor, man. The Justice League drops at midnight Pacific, ladies and gentlemen, 3 a.m. Eastern time on HBO Max. We've been waiting for it forever. Tonight, it's about to happen. Tonight, he arrives. Um, and you're going to find so much absolute joy. Go to the bathroom first. And get ready for four hours of an epic. Just a comic book splash page after splash page bought to life. Zack Snyder's Justice League, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight on HBO Max at 12 a.m. Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern. Have a great time, everybody. Thank you and good night. Good night. Thanks, man.